Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to today's live. Today we are going to talk about introduction to pronunciation or intro to pronunciation. How are you doing? I'm going to give you a few minutes to join. Today is going to be all about pronunciation, as you can see. And uh, if you've been with us in the previous trainings, then you know that we started talking about intonation. We talked about content words and we talked about function words. Um, I think that pronunciation and intonation or prosody actually are two elements of speech that complete each other and we layer one upon each other. Now, usually I do start with teaching pronunciation and then I layer it with prosody. But this time in, in this session of live trainings, I decided to start with, um, with intonation and then move into pronunciation. So if you haven't watched the previous trainings, live trainings, we've done them in, um, over the past week, then you can just scroll through my Facebook page or in, uh, YouTube, um, page Accents Way English and uh, Accents Way English on Facebook as well with Hadar and uh, you will find it really easy to find. So hello to everyone. Let me know where you're from, where you're joining me. Pronunciation tips. Actually, well, it's like the mother of all tips because <laughs> it's not just about how to pronounce something, but I want you to understand what pronunciation is and the elements of speech that you need to know in order for you to improve and gain confidence in your speech. So uh, let me see. We have people watching from all around the world, from Peru and Thailand, Argentina, Mozambique. Yesterday we were playing a game. I was playing a ga game with my daughter and uh, we were in the car and we need to think up words, uh, countries that starts with that start with M mem in hebrew and mozambique was the first uh place that came to mind so what a coincidence people from haiti hello okay good to see you all i'm gonna go ahead and get started okay and if you're joining me a little later then you can always watch the replay from the beginning so today we're going to talk about pronunciation introduction to pronunciation and it's really important for all of you who have been doing this of course it's great for you if you're just starting out but it's especially great if you've been doing some pronunciation work for a while because i need to make sure that you know the foundations the building blocks of pronunciation because then your work is not complete so in this training, you'll learn what speech sounds are, and then we're going to talk about sounds versus letters, the difference between sounds and letters and why it can get so incredibly confusing and frustrating at times. And then we're going to talk about production versus perception. Put yes in the comments if you've ever dealt with production versus perception, if you are even aware of the difference between the two when it comes to pronunciation. So put yes in the comments if you know the difference or you have discussed the difference between production and perception in the past, if you've been doing some pronunciation work in the past. So let's begin by talking about speech sounds. So in general, a speech sound is everything or elements. I have a, a definition, so I'm not going to tell you what that is. I'm just going to go to the definition. Speech sounds are elements that we use to form words and sentences. But in other words, in other words, is everything that comes out of our mouth, everything and anything that comes out of our mouth and we perceive it with our ears, that's a speech sound. Um, it could be a sound that exists in a language and it could be a sound that doesn't exist in your language or English, like for example, but in other language, it could be it's a sound that exists in the language, a speech sound. Okay. Daisy says, not sure. And then someone says, said yes, because I was asking if you know the difference, Patricia, uh, Patricia. Okay. Hung says no. No. Okay, good. So for all of you who wrote no and you're not sure what the difference is between pronunciation and pro uh, production, production and perception, uh, stay tuned because it's going to be really important and really help you when it comes to understanding English and English pronunciation. So 
speech sounds. Now, the types of consonant of speech sounds that we have are consonants and vowels. And I'm sure you've heard that those terms before, consonants and vowels. And we have those in any given language. So we take all the sounds that the human mouth can make and we divide it into two types of speech sounds, consonants and vowels, okay? Consonants are sounds that are made by full or partial blocking of the airflow. I'm going to read it again. Consonants are sounds that are made by full or partial blocking of the airflow. So when we talk about consonants, we are definitely talking about something that is stopped. Stopped, partially stopped, or interrupted. For example, in the word no, the N is a consonant because we block the air with the tongue. What happens? I want you to think about it. What happens in your mouth when you pronounce the n sound, the n in no, n. What are you doing? Okay, think about it. Where is the sound blocked? In this case, the tip of the tongue touches the upper palate, blocks the air flow inside the mouth, and the air comes out through the nose. The air is blocked, finds a different passage, right? There you have a consonant. In the word cab, we have two consonants, the k sound at the beginning, I'm blocking the air at the end, at the in the back of my throat, k, by bringing the back of the tongue up to touch the soft palate, k. and then we have b, where the air is blocked with the lips, cab, two consonants, stream, here we have three consonants, the s sound, partial block, t, full block, and m, mm, nasal block, where the air comes out through the nose. So. Consonants are sounds that are blocked, partially blocked, or interrupted. Now, vowels, unlike consonants, are sounds that are produced without blocking the airflow. We're just changing the quality of it, but we're not blocking the airflow. For example, no, oh, 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 right? No, oh. So here we have a vowel, in this case a diphthong, a sound that changes from one position to another within the same syllable. A syllable is a unit within the word. No. Cab, a, ah, is the vowel. I can hold it out forever for at least as long as I have breath, right? Cab. So here we have the a ah sound between two consonants and then stream. The E sound is a vowel, a high E sound. Stream. Okay, so I hope you're pronouncing these words with me together. If not, let's do it again and try to figure out. Now, I really want you to be kind of like curious and inquisitive and try to figure out what is your mouth doing when pronouncing these very common words, right? You might have said those words a gazillion times already, but have you ever thought about what your tongue is doing? for the N in no, and what your tongue is doing for the O sound, or your jaw, or your lips, right? So this is the time to look at it and think about it. No. Tip of the tongue comes up to touch the upper palate. Air comes out through the nose for the N. No. Then the tongue comes down for the O vowel. The jaw drops. The back of the tongue goes up to create that O back vowel sound. And then you gradually close your jaw and your lips for the O. No, so many elements that are working together to produce this one very frequent, very obvious word. No, cab, stream, okay? Now, this is where it gets confusing because <clears throat> English is not a phonetic language. I know, I know these are not news. You probably know this. The first time you tried to read a word and, you know, assume that you'd know how to pronounce it. And then you realize that that's not the case. My daughter is now learning to write in English and, you know, she's trying to like, or to read. And when she's reading it, she's reading it phonetically. And I'm like, mm -mm, no, 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 no. The fact that there is an A here does not mean that it's an A sound, right? The fact that you hear an A sound does not mean that it's going to be spelled with an E only so on and so forth. So English is not a phonetic language. That means that when we perceive the language we need to, or read the language or come across the language, we need to make this clear distinction between the letters that we see 
and the sounds that we hear. If there is one important thing that I need you to take from this, especially if you're just starting out learning pronunciation, it's this. The letters that you see, they don't correspond with the sounds that you hear. We need to think of them as two different parts, aspects of the language, right? Letters versus sounds. And the problem is that when you learn English in school, when you when you first encounter the language, you start by reading and writing. Unfortunately, most people do. And when you start with reading and writing, then you have a very strong perception of the written language. And that influences how you perceive the spoken language and the pronunciation of sounds. And that affects your perception. You actually start hearing words differently because of the spelling. Okay? So this is why making that distinction and disassociating spelling and pronunciation is the best thing you can do for yourself. So, um, Let's look at this. So like I said, English is not a phonetic language. And what I want to do now is compare sounds and letters, which, is, which are how we represent sounds in the spelling, right? Letters is how we represent sounds in the spelling, but it's inconsistent. So here's an example of how English is not a phonetic language when you have two letters that create one sound, right? It's not like the S sound usually represents the H sound usually represents, sometimes the H sound represents nothing, like in hours or ghost, right? And sometimes when you put the SH together, it creates a new sound, sh, right? Ship, ship. Now, sometimes you'll see the same letter and that same letter is going to have a different sound, sun, sure, right? Sh, sh, vision. If I want to get fancy, right? Zh sound. So uh, sometimes it's z as in bags. So when we think about it, the letter represents several sounds. So there isn't one letter that represents sound. And therefore, if we see the word written, it doesn't necessarily mean that we would know how to pronounce it. Um, sometimes, same thing with uh, vowels, by the way, right? Here we have three words that have the letter O, but you'll hear that all three O's are pronounced differently. Office, ah, ah's and father, office. And please, 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 if you're alone, if you're not on the train or in the bus or at the office, if you're alone watching this right now or watching the replay, make those sounds with me right? It's really hard to hear it and to really get it. You need to be making it even if it's not perfect. So don't just watch it. This is an interactive class, only I cannot actually hear you. But let's pretend that I can and uh, I want to hear you, okay? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, office, office, office. And then we have the O's and go, no, no, no. So we've already practiced this. Ah, uh, O, and then in the last word, try to say it out loud. <clears throat> what happens to the O there? <clears throat> I'm going to cough and drink my tea while well, you're going to let me know in the chat what happens to the O in the last word. <clears throat> so as you can see, <clears throat> it has the symbol of the schwa. The schwa is a reduced vowel. If you've been there, if you've been with me, <clears throat> it always happens to me when I'm going live. I don't know why. Why? I get this phlegm inside my throat. So um, last time we talked about the schwa and the reduced vowel sound, right? And that's what happens in unstressed syllables in words as well. And in this case, computer. Very good. Schwa. Computer. 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 Ah, o, uh. So three different pronunciations for the same letter, right? And there are more if we think about it. Um, so sometimes we have the same sound 
but different letters, right? Like gays and dogs. Sometimes we have letters that are not pronounced like no, we don't say no or code. We don't say Cody or code. And, um, and this is why we need to disassociate how we think or how we see the language versus how we say it or hear it inside our head. Because there is this one stage that I want you to treat properly, right, with importance, and that is how you hear the language inside your head, okay? Don't disregard it. Because the way you hear the, the word inside your head, a lot of times is not how you think it should sound. Because how you think it should sound is based on spelling, and how you hear it in your head, is pr especially if it's a fr common word, is based on how many times you've heard it right? And it's based on the way you've heard it in the past. And if, if, if you've heard the right pronunciation, then you are more likely to have a different way of thinking about this word, right? Like how it sounds versus how you think it should sound. And trust your intuition. I said that in the previous session as well. Trust your intuition when it comes to pronunciation, especially if you're exposed to English, because a lot of times our ideas about how we need to speak simply get in our way. Okay, good. Let's move on to talking about perception versus production. And here we're going to spend a little bit of time because I think it's really important to understand this part. So production is how speakers make the sounds. Non-native speakers, native speakers, it doesn't matter. It's actually what comes out of our mouth when we make the sound. It's the result, okay? So it doesn't matter how, what you think about the sound. It doesn't matter what you, um, how you hear the sound in your head. Production is the result. We can measure it. We can record it and look at the sound waves and look at the frequencies and tell what the sound is like, how 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 it sounds like, even just like through the visual representation of the acoustics of the sound. <clears throat> so, um, unlike perception, which is how speakers interpret the sound that they hear and make. So, perception is how we interpret the sound that we hear and that we make, right? How we think about the sound. And that's a new category, like I said before, that I want you to start considering how you categorize the sound, how you think about the sound. So, for example, if we have two different vowel sounds, sheep and ship, and let's say that you don't have that distinction in your language. Like in my language, in my language, we only have one E sound, E, E. And in American English, in English, there are two vowel sounds, the tense E, E, and the lax I, I, E, I. Put yes in the comments if you can hear the difference, if you can perceive the difference, E, I. Sheep, ship. But for me, I only have E in my first language. So in the first few years when I was speaking English, when I used to hear those two vowel sounds, I would categorize them as the same sound because I only had one E sound and I didn't have room for two different sounds, right? It's like a puzzle that you need, like the sound that you hear needs to be kind of like placed in the right shape, right? It's like a kid's game. Get a star, you need to put it where the star is. You get a heart, you need to put it where the heart is. And let's say I have a heart and a, like I, I only have a circle and I get a heart and a star. And I'm like, okay, where do I put those heart and star, E and E? Nowhere. I only have a circle. I'll try to fit it into that circle. It doesn't fit, but I'm going to do my best to get it in there because that's how my brain works. There's only a circle. So this is how I want you to think about it. You hear the sounds, but the brain is very limited based on what it's used to from your own language or how you were taught the language, right? Haiti says, I can't hear the difference, right? This is perception. This is why it's hard because 
for you, you don't have those two sounds. If you had those two sounds, it would be easier for you to understand it. So let me take it back a bit and say it again slowly. E, I, E, close your eyes, Heidi. E, 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 sheep, ship, sheep, ship. E, E, right? Repetition helps and comparing the two really helps as well. E, E, and the, the neutral E that I have that also like it exists in other languages with five neutral vowel sounds, E, 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 somewhere in the middle. Okay, so now back to the slides. When I don't have that category, it would be hard for me to perceive it unless someone tells me to pay attention to it or unless I notice it. For example, let's say I, I, I'm, I'm saying sheet and shit the same way, sheet and sheet, okay, because I only have one E sound. And then one day I go to the office and I say, oh, did you pull out the spreadsheet? And people start looking at me in a funny way. <clears throat> well, then I'm like, what did I say wrong? Maybe I need to pay attention to it or start asking myself why what comes out of my, my mouth is not why I had, in, had intended to say, or it's not what people expect to hear, right? Mm. Yeah, Christy says, it's my biggest problem to recognize sounds. And that is the thing. It's part of the work. It's part of the pronunciation work. It's not less important than practicing the actual sounds. Practicing your perception is as important as practicing your production, producing those sounds. So back to the spreadsheet or spreadsheet, when there is a misalignment between what I want to say and what is perceived, this is when I need to ask the questions. What am I getting wrong? Now, sometimes, sometimes I, I might know that there is a difference, but my mouth is going to keep producing the old sounds. And this is when I need to work on production. Whereas if I can't hear it and I can't recognize if someone is saying E or I, peace or piss, right? then if I can't hear it because my brain is, is kind of like limited, the brain only like the brain filters out sounds that don't exist in my native language, then this is where I need to work on my perception. I'm going to give you another example. Um, hold on. But before that, what affects our perception? So what affects our perception is our first language, first and foremost, Right. Um, the second thing that affects our perception is our exposure to our second language as a spoken language. Because if you only learn English through reading and writing, then you're going to you're gonna be a lot more influenced by spelling <clears throat> in your first language than if you were to be exposed to a lot of TV and songs and movies and people speaking this language around you, right? with uh, with the sounds of English. And then spelling does affect our perception because even if we might we might have been exposed to the language, going back to the word computer, right? And then O in our native language, let's say we're in our let's say you're a Spanish speaker and O is always O, right? And <clears throat> you see the word computer and you're influenced by the spelling. And you say computer, com, com, com. You put an o sound there. So you're influenced by the spelling. And that if, even though you don't hear it because people say computer, there is no o, because of the spelling you think there is. And that affects your perception. Um, let's look at another example. Pool versus pull or food versus foot. Again, if you don't have that distinction, tense u versus lax u, u and uh, and I know this is hard as well, then you might be thinking that these two words are produced the same, pool and pool, right? If I were to ask you to just say it out loud, if you haven't had a lot of pronunciation practice in the past and you don't have those two vowels in your first language, 
you probably said pool and pool, right? They're, they were probably pretty similar. And put right similar in the comment. Um, write similar in the comment if they sound similar when you say them. Francisco, so this is exactly what I'm talking about, the difference between production and perception. Production is when the sounds come out of your mouth, is what comes out, pull and pull. And perception is how you think about those words. So in a way, you could be thinking pull and pull, it's the same sound, and then the production is exactly the same as your perception. But sometimes you might be aware that there is a difference. I know that there is tense ooh and lax uh, pool and pull. But what my mouth does is the same, pull and pull. So this is why sometimes perception and production are different and sometimes they're the same. And what we need to do is work on our perception. So think about it like this. Perception is how we... It's like the sound inside our head. Production is the sound that is coming out of our mouth. Sometimes it's going to be the same. Sometimes it's going to be different. If it's the same, we need to, and it's not exactly the sound that we're looking for, then we need to work on how we perceive the sound and then on the pronunciation. If it's different, then we need to work on how we produce the sound. I know it's a little complicated what I just said. So if you're not clear just yet, then stick with me. You It will be clear until the end because I have a few more examples. Yeah, a lot of people said similar here because it sounded similar when you said it. Exactly. Right? And this is an important distinction, food and foot. Right? Get your, get your, I'm going to go get some food. If you say it and it sounds like foot, and it does when it comes to, you know, speaking, uh, when English is not your first language, it often does because this, the, 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 the second uh is a challenging sound, right? You need to practice it. Uh, and when it does, it starts affecting your intelligibility, your clarity. And when that's the case, it affects your message and then it affects your fluency and it affects your confidence. And it also affects how you hear English. So pronunciation is key because it's important that you know how to get what you want by using the sounds, using the right sounds, right? So nothing gets in your way. I'm going to give you another example. Have you ever noticed that there is a difference between the first word and the second word, right? I'm not going to say it deliberately, but have you noticed a difference between, you know, we have two examples here, between the first and the second word, between the verses? No difference. So I'm going to say it now. Pay, spell. Pay, sorry, that's my phone. Spell, pay, spell. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the next one. Puff, maps. Puff, maps. So the difference is how we, in how we produce the P sound. The P at the beginning of words is aspirated. So it feels like there is a little H right after it. Pay. P -p pay. Versus a regular P. Spell. P -p 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 now they, that I say it slowly, it's probably a little clearer, right? Pay, spell, pie, spy. Listen to the P. Pie, spy, pie, spy. People speak. People speak. 
When the P appears at the beginning of words, it's aspirated. That means that there is a little H right after. It feels like we're blocking the air and then releasing it with a puff, and then we release it like a whisper. People. Pay. Possible. Now, if I'm pointing it out, then it's easy for you to say, oh, that's right. Now I hear it. If I'm not, because you don't have the, uh, if you don't have the aspirated P in your native language and it's spelled the same, right? So you can't tell by the spelling, right? Cheap ship, you could, the spelling is different, but here the spelling is absolutely the same, right? So if you can't hear it, if you don't have it in your native language, then your perception needs to be changed. Now, perception changes instantaneously. Now that I said it, you'll notice it. Once I said the P at the beginning of the word is aspirated, and when it's right after a consonant or at the end of the word, it's not aspirated, stop, pay, then you'll start hearing it. And when you start hearing it, you can start making it, but you cannot make it without hearing it first. So to change your production, you need to change your perception too. To change your production, the end result, what comes out of your mouth, you need to change your perception first. So you need to make sure that you hear the differences. And the reason why you can't hear it is, like I said, A, because of your native language. Maybe you don't have that sound in your native language. Probably don't. B, because you weren't exposed to spoken English and only maybe to written English. And C, spelling, right? If you weren't exposed to the language, you have the sounds in your own language and in the spelling, it's absolutely the same, then this affects your perception. And we need to work on our perception as much as we work on our pronunciation, okay? And then once you change that perception, it's only physical work. And the physical work you can only always figure out, right? Because it's all about how you work with your lips and work with your mouth and work with your with, with, with all your articulation organs. And that requires practice and repetition, but it's pretty straightforward. Like, you know, eventually you can make any human sound on this planet with work, okay? With knowing how to do it in a clear way, with understanding your struggles, right? Understanding your tendencies, what you are more likely to pronounce, and then, um, and then just practice, right? just like anything physical. You're capable of doing anything. I want you to know that. Even if you think that you're not talented, even if you think that you're not good enough or that you don't have time to practice, you're capable of doing anything. You don't have to choose to do it all. You don't have to work on your pronunciation, right? When you work on pronunciation, you definitely don't have to work on everything, just on the things that would help you sound clearer and more confident, right? But you're capable of doing it. I need you to know that. I've worked with thousands of students. I've seen it over and over again. And I have done it myself. And it wasn't easy for me. I don't have this gift or talent for languages. I don't. I've been trying to learn other languages. I did not have similar practice time. And this is why I wasn't able to succeed as much as I have in English. It's not talent, right? I know that if I were to put my time and focus into learning Arabic like I want or Spanish or Portuguese, right? I'd be able to do it. I don't. I prioritize it differently. So this is the result. But if I were able to do it, you can absolutely, absolutely, freaking lutely do it. I need you to know that. Now, when you work on your pronunciation, you want to focus on both production and perception, right? So an example for how you work on production, you know, let's take the TH sound. Um, you want to drill the sound out loud. Make sure you stick the tongue out and you make sure that you, that the air comes out. Right? So that's how you work. You repeat it. You do it over and over again. And I'm going to be teaching you my pronunciation tips. I have a master class coming up later on this month. So stay tuned. Um, follow me on Instagram, by the way, if you haven't. If you're not just yet, let me see if I have, um, because I share with you updates and news about all my live training. So what is my Instagram handle? Accentsway. Hadar.accentsway. This is my Instagram. 
So you can go ahead and uh, follow me on Instagram if you want to get updates on all my live trainings and if you want to get updates about the master class that I'm going to be doing and about the boot camp that I'm going to talk about pretty soon, which starts on Monday. Okay, so let me unshow it. Um, so the TH sound production, you want to drill the sound out loud and make sure you stick the tongue out. And there is like an element of repetition there, right? Repeat, repeating words and words, phrases, and sentences. Now, now when you work on perception, again, for example, the TH sound, first of all, you want to listen carefully to others. You want to listen, close listening, I call it, listen to how people produce the sound. Then you want to practice minimal pairs like the sheep ship and the pool pull or the think sink or tanks, thanks, right? If you substitute the TH with a T sound, right? You want to work on those minimal pairs, similar words, ice, eyes, if you substitute the S and the Z, if that gets all confusing, right? So when it comes to perception for Spanish speakers, for example, I have a lot of Spanish speakers probably watching this right now, the S sound that is produced as a Z in so many of the cases, right? Cousin, season, bags, eyes. The S is pronounced as a Z. And since Z does not exist in Spanish, a lot of people pronounce it as an S. So this is a perception challenge. You perceive it as an S, but it's a Z. So you got to practice close listening and then minimal pairs. Um, okay, before we wrap up, I want to talk a little bit more about this, right? So production is just like the repetition and knowing what you do with your mouth and working on perception is the minimal pairs, listening closely, making sure that you're hearing those sounds, right? And all of that is, um, is going to help you improve your perception. All right, before we go into questions, just a little recap of what we did in this training, you learn what speech sounds are sounds versus letters, and production versus perception. Okay, I'm here to answer some questions, but before that, as you ask me your questions, I want to make sure that you have all signed up for the Fluency Bootcamp. It's a 14-day bootcamp designed to help you with your fluency. I'm going to be doing live training every single day for 20 minutes. So your commitment is 30 minutes a day for the next 14 days, starting on Monday, not the next, but starting on Monday, 14 days, 30 minutes a day, 20 minutes of me uh, teaching you something and then 10 minutes of imp implementation. So there, there is a workbook and tasks for every single day where you will have to kind of like think about it or put it into practice. What we're going to do in the boot camp, and let me know if, you jo if you've joined already in the chat, what we're going to do in the boot camp is I'm going to help you build powerful learning habits, right? So just by showing up every day, you will start creating momentum in your English practice. And it's going to be fun. Um, you're going to be, um, we're going to be talking about mindset and confidence. So that is the next thing that is going to happen and how to kind of like let go of all the fears that you might have. And then we're also going to talk about developing the right strategy and a lot of other things that are really important for you to reach your goals in English. So make sure Judith is already in the boot camp. Yay. Um, I've joined the boot camp. Great. I need that. Great, Andrea. Please join us. It's totally free. Okay. Absolutely free. 14 days live training every single day. Um, and just so you know, for those of you who joined and for those of you who haven't, who, who are planning to join, everything is going to be recorded. So even if you can't join live, you can simply just um, watch the replay a little bit after. Okay. The moment we are done with the live training, it's going to be every day at 9 a.m. EST, 2 p.m. London time. If you can't join us live, do not worry about it. You will be able to watch the replay. All the recordings are going to be available until the end of the month. So I really hope you can join us because if you're looking for a breakthrough, if you're looking for practice, we're going to have conversation groups. You're going to have like live Q and A's with me, coaching sessions, um, and some video challenges, a lot of opportunities to put things into practice. So I really, really, really hope that you will come there. Uh, you will join there again. It's absolutely free. Okay, good. 
We're going to start on Monday, this Monday, Monday the 14th, and it's going to last for 14 days. Okay, so before we wrap up, any questions about pronunciation? I'm going to go and check it out. Leia is here. Leia is going to share. She's sharing with you the boot camp link, and she will be hosting some of the introduction sessions and some of the conversation groups. And if you don't know Leia uh, and Katya, who are our ambassadors, um, then they will, you definitely should. So you should join us. Okay. Thank you, Ernesto, for sharing my Instagram account. Would you give, Fatma is asking, would you give recommendations for PNB for Arabic speakers? Okay, so Arabic speaker is a great question. I have a video about it, but quickly, I'm just going to explain how it works in terms of perception. Arabic speakers tend to, um, they don't have the P sound in their language in Arabic. So they, they tend to substitute it with the closest sound possible, which is the B sound. And because of this, because of perception, it's hard to hear the difference, right? And sometimes what happens is that they might hear a word with P, like pay, and because P does not exist in their language, they might think that it's a B. It's categorized as a B, okay? So this is where perception is challenging. And then P and B, the only difference between the two is the voicing, right? In P, it's just air, and B, we also have the vibrations of the voice, air with sound. Okay, so if you can't hear the P, that's a challenge of the, that's a challenge in your perception, and you need to start listening to it and hear the difference between P and B. But let's say you hear that there is a P, but it always comes out as a P. That's when you need to work on your production and start activating your vocal cords as you pronounce the B sound. Okay. Zineb is saying, I have many challenges pr with pronunciation. So an opportunity is all I need. So join the boot camp, um, which is definitely a great place for you to practice your pronunciation. We're not going to talk about pronunciation so much. That's going to be in my masterclass um, later on this month. Uh, but we're, I'm definitely going to be answering questions about pronunciation. Okay. Um, Roxana is saying in Spanish we only give we uh, we only give vowel sounds, which sometimes it makes difficult to catch the different vowel sounds that are in English. Roxana, I think you you meant to say we only have five vowel sounds. It's true, only five vowel sounds in English, in Spanish versus the sixteen in English, and this is why it's hard to perceive those all those sounds that don't exist in Spanish. Okay, so this is exactly what I said. Do not worry about it uh, because I have a guest here. So maybe, no, she doesn't want to come. Asya, do you want to come? My daughter's just walked in. So you want to come say hi? No. They have their own will, apparently. Um, so, okay, so this is Amalia. Hi, Amalia. Hello. Um. Don't worry, because everything is going to be recorded, okay? I'm a little bit worried about the timing, so in India, it would be 4 a.m. It wouldn't, because it's going to be at 7.30 p.m. your time, because it's going to be 4 p.m. my time. 7 a.m., um, it's going to be 7 a.m. Eastern time, okay? Which means, I think, like I said, like there is a 10-hour difference. Uh, when you join the boot camp, you will get a schedule, a calendar, where you will be able to see it in your own time zone. Okay? So please don't worry about the timing. I only, like, I, 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 we have a global audience, people from California and people from Australia and New Zealand and, you know, India and Japan and Europe. So we have people from all around the world. This is why the boot camp is designed for it to go live whenever I, you know, whenever it's possible, I'm trying to do it right in the middle. So we can, it's going to be nighttime for East Asia and morning time for the U S but at the same time, it, it's going to be recorded. So everyone can watch it. Please don't worry. 
Great question. What is the pronunciation difference between won't and want? So this is the difference between two vowels. Won't has the long O as a go. Wo, won't, like no, we practiced it at the beginning. And want is the as and father, ah, right? Want, won't. And this difference makes all the difference, right? Because if both sound the same, won't and won't, because of perception, you might be unclear right? It's, it might affect your clarity. Alex asks, how can I join your pronunciation and accent courses? So at the end of the boot camp, I'm going to talk about how you can continue working with me and go deeper into pronunciation work. So if you like this training, you're going to love what I teach in my programs. Um, so I'm going to be talking all about that at the end of the boot camp and help you understand if it's the right fit for you. We're opening doors for New Sound at the end of the month. New Sound is my signature program that I open doors to twice a year. And um, a huge part of it is about pronunciation, but it's the pronunciation work that is designed to give you freedom, okay, and confidence in your speaking. All right, my friends, I know that you have a lot more questions, but we're going to wrap up for today and I'm inviting you, hold on, I'm inviting you to join me again on Monday, March 25th and um, let me think about it. No, it's not going to be on March 25th. Please ignore this. This is a mistake. I think, no, maybe it is. Stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram <laughs> because I think the next training is on March 25th. We're going to do another um, training, okay? Challenging transitions, like all those tricky elements of speech that are hard for you to produce if you want to work more on pronunciation. So put it in your schedule. March 25th, I need to trust the slides less than my memory. Um and definitely join the boot camp where we're going to do a bunch of other exciting things. All right. So I hope to see you all in the boot camp, hadarshamish.com forward slash boot camp. Or if you are on Facebook, uh, Leia just shared the link. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much. And um, keep asking me questions. If you're watching the replay, you can ask me questions in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Bye.